Hello everyone, welcome to Engineered Learnings. Engineered Learnings has been created as an effort to help and reach out to all the engineering students, aspirants and professionals out there with the basic understanding and the crux of the topics important for placements, vivas, semesters, competitive examinations and all types of interviews. So let's go to today's topic. Welcome everyone. Today we are going to discuss about a very important topic used in industry, knocking and octant number. So uh, how is knocking interrelated with octant number and what is knocking exactly all about? You are driving a car for a very long time. The engine has heated up probably 2 and 3 hours, 2 or 3 hours. The engine is already being heated up uh, very much and uh, if we draw the engine, a simplified diagram though. This is downstroke, this is the upstroke. This is the spark ignition, very simplified diagram. This is the carburetor and the inlet valve allowing the formation of gasoline vapors. So what happens is, supposedly if I draw the structure, the big, this is the initial level of the piston cylinder alignment. This is the spark ignition. This is supposed to be the level where it should strike for 1 is to 8 compression ratio and therein the spark will ignite. After Every time it strikes here, after one second, it strikes here and the spark ignites, supposedly. Now what happens is, since the engine has been running for quite a long time now, this chamber has already gone, got very heated up. So uh, two to, after two to three hours of driving, what happens is, this gasoline air mixture are, is already very much heated up. So when it comes down during the downstroke, trying to compress the section supposedly after every two seconds the spark ignites the spark ignites at 1.5 seconds its position is somewhere here the front's position is somewhere here supposedly and it should come at this position when the spark ignites now after coming to this position this is such compressed and it has developed so much pressure and temperature enough such that the gasoline air mixture pockets somewhere away from the front of the spark ignition point undergoes auto ignition undergoes auto ignition so what is auto ignition auto ignition is a process by which a quantity of the fuel air mixture catches fire or explodes without the presence without the presence of any fire front that is there is not a requirement of a fire front to be generated it is such a temperature of ignition temperature is such a temperature at which the pockets of gasoline and air in this case auto explodes without the introduction of any fire or any spark so what happens is the spark is to be ignited at 2 seconds, at 1.5 seconds, at a position somewhere higher than the position to be reached here. Supposedly 1 is to 7 compression ratio, the pockets auto ignite. When the pockets auto ignite, the piston before coming to this zone tends to move up due to the explosion. Now what happens, the, the explosion creates a shock wave, a shock wave that is traveling in this direction, traveling in every direction tending to push up the piston. Now as the spark is supposed to be ignited at 2 seconds, it will ignite at 2 seconds. The piston's position will be somewhere here because it is going up and it is having a motion somewhere up. But the spark ignites. Now there are gasoline air mixture portions here as well. So as soon as it comes in contact with the front of the spark generated, it ignites, it explodes. That is the original explosion that was supposed to take place that generates a shock wave these two shock waves collide somewhere between and that creates a very noisy environment a resonance type effect the two shock waves collision creates a resonance type or a, a, a noisy environment and that is very destructive for the engine itself moreover the motion that was supposed to be synchronized it should come here then the spark would ignite it would explode it would go up it would leach somewhere like this and it will be fitted with a crankshaft then it will again come down from this height to this height 
the rotted line height, then it, the spark will again ignite, it will explode. The regular synchronization gets disturbed because it's not allowing this to come to this level before even the spark is ignited. It is occurring a case of pre-ignition. Now this pre-ignition and knocking we can see is interrelated. And what is exactly knocking up all about? An auto explosion of a, a pocket of gasoline and air mixture vapor. A pocket of air and gasoline vapors uh, away from the away from the fire front, in, not in contact with it. Auto explodes by itself, creating a shock wave. The original shock wave created by the fire front in the spark ignition engine, when it collides with that auto explosion or auto ignition shock wave. The two shock waves collide to form to give rise to knocking condition. Moreover, this pre ignition disturbs the regular synchronization of the engine, disturbs the environment of the engine. Another example of this is as we know, this is the inlet valve and this is the engine. Now, originally going, this is the upside down movement, and this is the piston, and this is moving like this. This is the upstroke, and this is the downstroke. It's coming out, so it's expanding and it's going up, so it's compressing against it. This is the spark and this is the outlet valve. So what happens is after all the combustion has taken place and entirely it has formed the uh, a flue gas and explosion has taken place. So it is time that the inlet valve remains closed and the outlet valve opens to let go the flue gas. So what happens is when it lets go the flue gas, it tries to create a pressure. There is some unburnt carbon particles in the flue gas as well. Those unmanned carbon particles undergo auto ignition here also. And before a certain level is reached to drive out the entire flue gas, the piston again moves back and the flue gas is not removed completely. So these two cases are cases of auto ignition or pre ignition that occurs and finally gives rise to knocking because the spark is going to ignite at regular intervals, then there is going to be a shock wave that is going to collide with the shock wave initially created due to knocking, uh, due to pre-ignition or auto-ignition. So the problem and the term that is coming uh, into picture very prolifically is auto-ignition and auto-ignition temperature. So auto-ignition temperature should be kept as high as possible to let the auto-ignition be delayed. Auto-ignition should be delayed in a spark ignition engine. Now, to delay this auto ignition and to increase the auto ignition temperature, we will have to prevent easy combustion and how to do that? We will have to remove H2. We will have to remove H2 because H2 is a supporter of combustion. The more we remove H2, the lesser is the tendency of combustion or auto ignition. Moreover, we will have to see that if this is a straight chain and these are the carbon centers, the oxygen easily attacks, easily attacks these carbon centers. Whereas if there is branching, there is, this is not a straight chain, this is branching, this is undergone isomerization, so steady hindrance occurs and easy attack of oxygen does not take place. So there are several methods by which auto ignition temperature can be increased and auto ignition can be delayed or prevented. We do not want the engine to auto ignite after two or three hours of driving. Otherwise, it would go here and there, it will be uh, no synchronization and a noisy environment will be created. So what we should do is, some methods that can be employed are cyclization, that is normal C6 to benzene. When we do that, hydrogen number decreases, moreover, steady hindrance is added. That is a structure somewhere like this, a bent structure would provide more steady hindrance due to a pi cloud as we all know in benzene. Moreover, another is aromatization. That is cyclohexane, cyclo C6 to benzene. You see, both of them are cyclic compounds. So there is there, there comes no case of steady hindrance, only hydrogen number decrease. And last but not the least is isomerization. That is branching, not allowing the easy attack of oxygen. Not allowing easy attack of oxygen. So three 
of these methods are to decrease the autoignition temperature. Decrease it. Decrease it. And autoignition should be delayed. Thus, gasoline is made to pass through a catalytic reforming unit, wherein a catalytic reforming unit, catalytic reforming, wherein the octane number is increased. The more is the octane number, the lesser is the autoignition temperature. Or, uh, sorry, I, I mentioned the wrong thing here. That is, autoignition temperature is increased by all of these methods. So that it does not auto ignite easily. The auto ignition tendency is decreased. Catalytic reformer increases the octane number and decreases the auto ignition. Increases the auto ignition temperature and delays the auto ignition. Thus, an increase in oct octane number would result in a decrease in the tendency of auto ignition. Thus, this is the case of a catalytic reforming, and this is how a structure of gasoline can be modified to decrease the tendency of autoignition. Whereas with autoignition engine, in a diesel engine, we know it is desired that autoignition takes place because there is no spark ignition. There is autoignition that has to take place easily. Thus, diesel is always of a lower octane number. To undergo easy auto ignition for diesel. And octane number is high and auto ignition is low for gasoline. Because we want pass spark ignition, we do not want auto ignition after driving for two or three hours. We do not want knocking to take place. That is the uh, discussion for today. If you liked our discussion, then hit the likes button, subscribe to our page, share, comment, uh, and thank you. That's it for today.